Yes, yes, I'm all bummed up, I don't know what's going on. Woo! Woo, yeah, no, not much will today. Uh, that kills my throat. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a cold, I'm all bunged up, and I apologise for my voice. So you want to upgrade that Windows Home to Windows Pro? Or just get killer prices on Windows, Office 2016 and cheap gaming keys? Head on down to 09. Make sure you copy and paste my code from the description to get a price that's going to make you go woo! Can you hear those fans? That's the Alienware. So yeah, you got to get the right tool for the right job. And the Alienware will be great for content creation, except if you're going to be recording audio, right? You don't want fans going off. So anyway, let's get into this. Apologize for the fans, apologize for my voice. Now let's talk about the 2080, 2070 and the 2080 Ti. And Nvidia now have released benchmarks and they're saying 1.5 times faster. So that's 50% faster. So think if you're 4K gaming, you're 60 frames per second. Now you'll be able to get 90 frames per second. These are their benchmarks. So we'll wait and see. I'm going to tell you something different to every other reviewer out there saying wait for the benchmarks don't buy now don't pre-order i'm going to tell you pre-order now like if you want one of these pre-order now you don't know when you're going to get one maybe a long waiting time so i'll definitely suggest you um pre-order now unless you're thinking of buying it as an upgrade say for example you have a 1080 ti and you 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 want to upgrade because you think it's going to be a big performance leap yeah then wait for benchmarks but if you're in the market now for a graphics card just pre-order this now because it's going to be faster how much faster they're saying 1.5 times 50 percent and that sounds all right to me we'll keep an eye on this and i will have reviews of it very soon so anyway a couple of things from bloomberg bloomberg um had this article and it says new low cost macbook macbook air and focus macbook mini now if we have a look at the macbook mini i really love the macbook mini because of its price look at that price 499 now this wasn't the good one they used to have a quad core one that you could put two hard drives in so two uh two and a half inch drives so two ssds you could put in there could get up to 16 gigs ram and a quad core that thing was awesome and i always love these things because of their price point and how good they were this one sort of sucked a bit because they went back to dual core and they made it thinner and lighter and stuff but you know i would rather have a quad core and two two and a half inch drive bays than um have you know a dual core why would i want that so anyway they're saying that they're going to make it a more pro level mac mini now these don't sell very well it could be because you know they haven't updated them in a long time but that's just the reality maybe they're thinking at this you know lower price point they're not selling so we'll try and change it up so we can sell more so if we have a look here i'm thinking it's going to get a cabby lake g if they're talking about more professional which i don't like i'd prefer if it just had a quad core in it and something like that and it would stay the same price at that 499 us start it there if they're going professional and i'm thinking hey it's canyon here or cabby lake g the the processor that goes in the xps 15 and there's hp it goes in as well those things are super powerful so there's two cabby lake g's there's the 65 watt version and there's the 100 watt version now the 65 watt version that goes in the xps 2 in one that has the graphical performance and it has vega graphics with hbm memory four gigabytes of video ram that has the performance of basically a gtx 1050 now the 100 watt version has the performance of a gtx 1060 so super powerful graphics there okay and if they do do this this is the sort of ia you're going to get probably apple won't give you ethernet i don't think they'll do that but this thing here this hades canyon and if people are interested i'll get this in because i have access to one of these if you want me to review it uh, let me know but this thing is expensive for one but this can actually output to six 4K monitors, six, I said, yes, six monitors. Look, two display ports there, two Thunderbolt 3s, um, HDMI, it can output to six monitors. Just an amazing amount of I.O. there. So if the Mac Mini come out like this and it was pro level and had all this stuff or had just Cabby Lake G, it'll be awesome. But the downside to that is going to be expensive. <laughs> because this is a thousand dollars us this hates canyon with no storage and no ram 
So it's going to be a $1,500, $1,600 by the time you put those things in. So I can't imagine it's going to be a cheap Mac Mini if that is the case. So I'm a bit disappointed in that way, but um, I'm super happy to see that they're upgrading this. But I really do wish they have a low-cost Model 2 and, you know, have something like a, uh, uh, you know, just a quad-core, 15-watt quad-core in there. I'll be happy. They also said they're going to release a MacBook Air. So a replacement for this with thinner bezels, better display. Now these computers are solid computers, $999, good price point. Now if they do replace this and they do actually put say a 15 watt quad core in it instead of say using something like what they use in that Surface Go. If they do put a 15 watt quad core in this, maybe they won't because of the price point they're trying to get this in at. But if they did, that would disrupt the market. To have a laptop, $999 killer display, great battery life, great performance. I mean, that'll cut the lunch of the MacBook Pro uh, 13 inch. Like, it, like, why would you buy the MacBook Pro 13 inch and only if you wanted the 28 watt, you know, quad core. But I don't think they're gonna put the 15 watt quad core in it. I, I'm thinking probably not because, yeah, as I said, it will cut the lunch of the um, MacBook Pro 13 and probably be a bit too expensive. We'll see about that. Also, iMacs. iMacs are due to be refreshed. Now, if Intel do come out with the rumoured 8-core part for the um, Z390 platform, which is supposed to be coming in, say, October, they're going to have 6-core and 8-core parts. The 8-core will be the i9. This is going to be a game-changer for these sort of things because if you can get an 8-core iMac, all right, it won't have the graphical power of the iMac Pro, but it'll blow it away. Like in Final Cut, it'll blow it away because it has Intel HD graphics and Final Cut will be able to use Quink Sync. Already now, as it stands with these current 5K iMacs, they actually render faster than an entry model 8-core iMac Pro in anything that involves Quick Sync, of course. And they're only four cores. So you can imagine adding another four cores on top of that if you get the i9. The i9 will be expensive, but at least bare minimum six cores. Maybe a little update on the graphics there. It'll blow the 8 and 10 core iMac Pro out of the water. No problems there if you're using Final Cut and rendering out to a Kodak supported by QuickSync. I reckon it would even beat the 18 core if you're outputting, say, from ProRes or H.264 to H.264, like output into YouTube. It'll beat the 18 core, I reckon. Some great news there can't wait for the new graphics cards hopefully the mac mini is not too expensive and yeah that macbook air could be disruptive if it comes in at a competitive price point hopefully they do not put those core m or y process whatever those things are don't put that in it hopefully not let me know what you guys think again i apologize for my voice i'll catch you in the next one tally ho